Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. Hi, it's your favorite abandoned warehouse Sarah here with another car review and today I'm reviewing this. It's a 2030 Ricer Starter Pack. The perfect car for your kids to ruin 10 years from now when they start driving. It's not a SI, it's not a Type R, it's just a common everyday Honda Civic. But it is a touring model so it's got a little bit of extra spice to it and it still has a 1.5 liter turbo much like the Civic SI. So eventually someone's going to want to modify this. I wouldn't say right off the bat brand new because this actually costs more than an SI sedan. Let me point out the obvious for you guys here real quick. This is a sedan. And the Civic also comes in a coupe and a hatchback. That means there is three, three different variants of the same model of car. And you don't see a lot of that in the car market today. The Touring is the top trim spec of the Civic sedan for normal folk. And it comes with these LED headlights as well as 18 inch wheels and a few other luxury amenities that make it cost more than the SI sedan. So just buy the SI or just buy the Type R. Why do people need automatic transmissions? Horsepower. I do love a good hatchback, but for those of you sedan lovers out there, the 10th gen Civic isn't too bad looking. It has this kind of fastback style to it despite being a trunk. And it has pretty taillights also. What is this? Honda, where is the HDMI port in the back of the Civic? Sad, where am I gonna plug my giant cable into? Shoot. What the hell is that? Is there a toucan in this warehouse? That was weird. All right, the interior, you guys know I roll. I'm gonna keep it short, sweet, and to the simple and tell you what it feels like to be physically sitting in this car right now because in case you forgot, I'm sitting in it. So the first thing that stood out to me other than my stomach growling right now is the leather seats in the touring model are pretty. It's an attractive looking leather seat. Oh, the rear seats are heated. No shit. That's dope. You don't normally see that on little cars like this. Cool. It does have this weird metal trim on the dash and the door cards, which I don't know what kind of metal it's trying to replicate. It's pretty though. Well, the back seats in here are comfy. Actually really comfy. The butt cushion in this thing is nice. And uh, I got plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom. I got a cup holder and you got your own dome light. It's not LED, that kind of sucks. I like LED. It has a upscale vibe feel to the interior despite having a tan headliner, which I'm not a fan of because if you rip open a hot sauce packet, you're gonna get it on there and you'll never get it out. They should just put black headliner in here. It would really f complete the feel of a luxury interior. It's not bad for being an economy car. It doesn't feel or look cheap in here. The infotainment system does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, because this is a touring model, it does have Honda navigation, which is completely useless if you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, because then you can just use a navigation system on your phone, which I'm a fan of Waze because it's cute. Well, that's cute little day night button right on the top. The center console on here will confuse the hell out of your penguin because there's so many slidable configurable positions that you can put cup holders and move them around and there's room for a giant jug in there. And uh, I just want to stick little Lego people in all the compartments. So it's just cute and it's a nice surprise every time you move one around. Mm -hmm. All right, let's drive this thing. Push button start. Oh. Roar 1.5 liter VTEC turbo. All right, now this is a CVT because this is a touring model, but I wanna say this. There is one cool thing about having a CVT paired with a turbo and that's slingshot and gauge mode. And I'll talk about that in a little second when we drive it. There is, there's a rainbow at the end of this tunnel, I promise you. Who parties with couches this hard? Jeez, people are ruthless in here. Somebody spray painted Pepsi on this armchair. Why? Do they love Pepsi that much? Another little fun feature this has on the end of your directional stock, there's a button right here. There's actually a camera built in the passenger side mirror to let you see what's on the side. Like if you're changing lanes, it automatically comes on when you signal directional, but only on the passenger side. Let's face it, there is nothing exciting about a CVT. 
but when you pair it with a turbo, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's kind of fun and the fact that a CVT, when it left in its natural state, has a mechanical advantage over any other type of transmission. That is the fact that keeps you in the peak power band at all times and it doesn't shift. When you shift, you lose time in accelerating, also lose efficiency. Now, unfortunately, Honda adds fake shift points to this thing, even if you leave it in drive. So it doesn't matter if it's in sport or drive, it's gonna fake simulate shifts, which is not faster and it doesn't help fuel economy. But when you pair it with a turbo, turbos have to build boost. So it creates a slingshot engage effect, which is fun. It's the only thing that you can say is fun about a CVT. So we're gonna give the beans and just slingshot engage. I'm gonna put it into sport mode. I'm going to turn off traction control and uh, we're gonna engage the slingshot. Ready? Go. Okay, build boost. There we go. Little slingshot, go. That's, that's actually quick. That's not too bad. <laughs> That's fun. That's actually fun. Surprising that a CVT can be fun. But it is if you let it act like a CVT. I just wish it didn't have those fake shifts. I wish it would have just stayed like a CVT. Just sound like a snowmobile. It's okay. Hello, and welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. Powering this Honda Civic is a spoon engine running a T66 turbo and NOS. At least that's what Hector says. Anyway, uh, it's actually the L15 B7. A little bit less exciting. It does have a TD03 turbo on there, single scroll. No NOS though. It's not gonna go up in green flames, don't worry. I'll stop now. This L15 B7 produces 174 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 162 pound-feet of torque at 1,700 RPM. There's a whole lot of business going in there for just being a 1.5 liter, which is not like Honda's back in the Fast and Furious era. This thing actually has torque. Aww, it's such a cute little valve cover. It's so adorable and little and plastic. Hmm. I do miss the old B-series Hondas. An A for life. Nope, doesn't smell like fuel. That's good. You can get the non-performance model Civics equipped with a six-speed manual. However, you can only get it on the LX and Sport trim. The upper trim levels only come with the CVT transmission, which, in my opinion, Honda and other manufacturers are doing it backwards. The people that buy manual transmissions today aren't buying them because they're poor. They're buying them because they enjoy driving. So only offering a manual on stripped out base model vehicles makes zero sense. Don't tell me what to do, Honda. I'll grab your foam if I want to grab your foam. There is an exception to this though. If you get the Civic hatchback in the top trim spec, the Sport Touring, you can get it with a six speed manual and they're 180 horsepower, six more. There was somebody at Honda who's an enthusiast who thought about that one. Appreciate it. It wouldn't be one of my reviews without the braking test. The one behind me. Ready? Oh wow. Oh my god. Those are incredible brakes for just being a normal Civic. Yeah, that's good. Awesome clamping force. Thing will clamp your face off. That's all right. All right, little Civic, not bad. The Honda Civic is arguably one of the most modified cars out there. And for good reason, it's a great platform to work with, especially for your first car. Now, let's face it, not all of them that get modified are Civic SIs or R's, very rarely type R's because up until the current FK8 generation, you couldn't get one in America. So there is a good chance this car will end up modified eventually. And the question is, how does it do? Well, it has basically the same engine as the SI, just a detuned version of it. And it actually handles pretty decent. This thing sticks when you chuck it into a corner. That this is actually a really good chassis. It makes me, oh, I wish I could 
of you an SI or a Type R? I would actually consider buying a Type R. All right, bumpy section. Not disturbed. Check it to this corner. Oh yeah, wow. Wow, dude, this thing has got a ton of grip. <laughs> Just for a normal Civic. So if you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I do it was called the Bean Score. It's a rating of one to five legumes based on the feeling you get in your gut when you go. Just, just go. So this 2020 Civic Touring is going to get a rating of 1.5 beans. It's quick, despite this not being an SI or the Holy Grail Type R, which, FYI, I tried to get one of those two vehicles to review for you guys, but I'm not famous enough to get those kind of cars, apparently. So feel free to send your complaints to am I a joke to you at honda.com. Anyway, I'm just joking. I'll see you guys soon with another review. Bye. <laughs>